Hello everyone. Welcome to my comprehensive course on Angular. My name is Hasib. I will be your instructor in this course. I am a computer engineer and working as a web developer for a long time. In this course, I will assume that you are a complete beginner and by the end of the course you will be a advanced level do you want to program like a professional program this course will teach you step by step so that you can learn and understand angular Enroll now and get the opportunity to learn from this complete Angular course. Thank you for being with me. Hello everyone, welcome to the course. In this lecture, I am telling you about a fast Angular application. In this lecture, I am telling you about three versions of the Hello World application written in TypeScript, ES5 and ES6. This will be the only section where you will see Angular application written in ES5 and ES6. All other code samples will be written in TypeScript. Now, Hello World in TypeScript. This first application will be quite minimalistic to get you quickly started programming with Angular. Both files are located in the Hello World TS directory in the downloadable code for the lecture. The index.html file is the entry point for the application. It will be contain references to the Angular framework, its dependencies, and the main .ts file, which contain the code to bootstrap your application. Some of these references can be located in the configuration file of the module loader. The code of the Angular framework consists of modules which are combined into libraries which are logically grouped into packages. Let's create an index.html file which will start by loading the required Angular script, the TypeScript compiler and the system.js module loader. When the application is launched, the hello world tag will be replaced with the content of the template from the annotation. Generated files are not committed into a version control system and Angular 2 does not include ready to use bundles in its git repository. They are generated on the fly and published along with the npm packages. So you can use unpkg to directory reference production ready bundles in html files. Instead we prefer using a local install of angular and its dependencies. So you will install them using an MP. Everything that is installed by an MP will be stored in the node underscore modules directory in each project. Now content deliver networks.
UN package is a CDN for packages published to the NMP package manager registry. Check nmpjs.com to find the latest version of the particular package. If you want to see which other version of the package are available, run the NMP info package games command. Now let's create a main .ts file which has the TypeScript or Angular code and three parts. Number one, declare the hello world component. Number two, wrap it into a module. Number three, load the module. You will implement this part in three separate files, but here for simplicity, you will keep all the code of this tiny app in one file. Now, what is metadata? In general, metadata is additional information about data. For example, in an MP3 file, the audio is the data but the name of the artist, the song title and the album cover are metadata. The mp3 player includes a metadata processor that reads the metadata and displays some of it while playing the song. In the case of classes, metadata is additional information about the class. For example, the add component decorator tells angular that this is not a regular class but a component angular generates additional javascript code based on the information provided in the properties of the add component decoder in the case of class properties the add input decorator tells angular that this class property should support binding and be able to receive data from the parent component. You can also think of a decorator as a function that attaches some data to the decorated element. The add component decorator does not change the decorated class but adds some data describing the class so the angular compiler can properly generate the final code of the component either in the browser's memory or in the file on disk now hello world in es5 to create application with es5 you should use a special angular bundle distributed in universal module definition format. It publishes all Angular APIs on the global ng object. The HTML file of the ES5 Angular Hello World application might very useful. Because ES5 does not support the annotation syntax and has no native module system, the main.js file should be written differently from its TypeScript version. The first immediately involved function expression invokes the component and class method on the global angular core namespace ng.core. You define the hello world component object and the component method attaches the metadata defining its selector and template. By doing this, you turn the JavaScript object into a visual component. Now hello world in ES6. The ES6 version of the hello world application looks very similar to the TypeScript version, but it uses Tracer as the transpiler of system.js. The index.html file The only difference between the ES6 main.js file compared to the TypeScript main.ts file is that now you do not have the procedures name class member. 
and that's it the hello world in year 6 i am now covering and it is very useful for you and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course in this lecture first i am telling you about launching application to run any web application you will need a basic http server such as http server or live server the latter performs live reloads of the web page as soon as you modify the code and save the file of the running application if you use http server you will need to manually open the web browser and enter the url http double forward slash localhost 8080 whereas live server will open the browser for you to run the hello world application launch live server in the root directory of the project it will load index dot html in your web browser you should see hello angular to rendered on the in the browser's developer tools panel you can see that the template you specified for hello world component becomes the content of the hello world element and the data binding expression is replaced with the actual value you used to initialize the name property in the constructor of the component now the building blocks of an angular application i am giving you a high level overview of the main building blocks of an angular application so that you can read and understand angular code i am discussing each of this topic now now modules an angular modules is a container of a group of related component services directives and so on you can think of a module as a library of component and services that implement certain functionality from the business domain of your application such as a shipping module or a billing module all elements of a, a small application can be located in one module whereas larger apps may have more than one module all apps must have at least a root module that is bootstrapped during the app launch es6 modules just offer you a way to hide and protect function or variables and create loadable scripts angular module is constant and used for packaging related application functionality from the syntax perspective a module is a class annotated with the ng module decorator and that can include other resources Importing Brush module is a must in the root module, but if your app will consist of the root and feature modules, the latter will need to import common module instead. Members of all imported modules are available to all components of the module. Your app modules can be loaded either immediately as in the preceding code snips or lazily by the router you will use at ng module in every lecture so you will have a chance to see how to declare module with multiple member now components 
the main building block of an angular application is the component each component consists of two parts a view that defines the user interface and a class that implements the logic behind the view any angular application represents a hierarchy of component packages in modules an app must have at least one module and one component which is called the root component there is nothing special about the root component compared to other components any component assigned to the boot step property of the module becomes the root component the selector property is similar to a css selector each html element that matches the selector is rendered as an angular component you can think of the add component decorator as a configuration function that complements the class if you look at the transpiled code of the main.js file from the listing you will see that angular compile did with the add component decorator for web application a template contain html markup you can also use another markup language for rendering native mobile applications provided by third party frameworks if the markup consists of a couple of dozen lines or less we keep it in line using the template property we did not use backticks in the preceding example because it is a single line of markup and does not contain single or double quotes now directives the add directives decorator allows you to attach custom behavior to an html element each component is basically a directive with an associated view but unlike a component a directive does not have its own view to bind events to event handlers enclose the event name in parenthesis with the input event occurs on the host element the on input event handlers is invoked and the event object is passed to this method as an argument directives can be attached to various html elements and the constructor of these directives gets the reference to the rendered and the ui element injected by angular now a brief introduction to data binding angular has a mechanism called data binding that allows you to keep a component properties in sign with the view this mechanism is quite sophisticated and i am telling you about data binding in detail in this lecture i am telling you about the most common to a value a string in the temple if you want to reference a dom object property within the template add a local template variable that will automatically store a reference to the corresponding dom object and use dot notation now that you know how to write a simple angular application and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the course in this lecture i am telling about javascript and typescript the javascript language is managed through a standard process that defines new features modern browsers have started to implement features from the ec mac script 6 standard and the 
process for defining ec ma script 7 is underway as i write the new standard broaden the features available to javascript developers and make using javascript more consistent with more conventional language such as c# hash or java modern browser update themselves which mean that a google chrome user for example is likely to have a recent release of the browser that implements at least some of the most recent javascript features sadly older browser that do not update themselves are still in widespread use which means you cannot rely on modern features being available for use in your application there are two way to approach this problem the first is to use only the core javascript feature that can rely on being present in the browsers that you application targets the second is to use compiler that process your javascript file and convert themselves into code that can run on older browser now using classic javascript for angular you can write angular application using just the javascript feature that work in older browsers without needing to add the additional step of using the typescript compiler to process files the problem with this application is that it results in code that is difficult to read and difficult to manage there are some recent javascript features that simplify the way that angular features are defined and applied and one feature called decorators that is essential for effective angular development but that is only a proposal for the javascript standard digestion process that is not supported by any browser my advice is to embrace the complete angular experience even though it can take some time and effort to master the new javascript feature the result will be a better development experience concatenating code that is more concise easier to read and simpler to maintain now preparing the example project to prepare this i started a new project by creating a folder called javascript prime i added a file called package.json with the javascript prime folder and added the configuration the package that are specified in the package.json file include polyfill libraries that add support for essential features to older javascript browsers a javascript module loader and the bootstrap css frameworks the tools required to use typescript to generate javascript file are also included now creating the html and javascript file i created a file called primer.ts in the javascript prime folder and added the code this is just a placeholder to get the project started the html file includes a script element that loads a file called prime.js 
this file does not exist yet, but the TypeScript compiler will generate it when it processes the primerr.ts file. Now configuring the TypeScript compiler. The TypeScript compiler requires a configuration file that specifies how it should generate JavaScript file. I created a file called tsconfig.json in the JavaScript primer folder and added the configuration. I explain what each configuration setting does. It is enough to just create the file. Now running the example project. Once you have created all the required files, run command to start the TypeScript compiler and the development HTTP server. A new browser tab or window will open and display the content of the index.html file. Open the browser's F12 developer tools, so called because they are typically opened by pressing the F12 key and look at the JavaScript console. The JavaScript console shows the result of the call to the console.log function rather than show a, a screenshot of the browser's JavaScript console for each example. And there's it the example project for running. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the course. In this lecture, I am telling you about understanding the script element. JavaScript code is added to an HTML document using the script element. The src attribute is used to specify which JavaScript file should be loaded. The name of the file loaded by this element is primer.js. When using the TypeScript compiler, there is an indirection relationship between the files that contain the JavaScript code that you write and the files that are loaded by the browser. This can be an awkward transition to make if you are used to writing JavaScript file directly. But it allows the TypeScript compiler to translate the most recent features from the JavaScript specification into code that will run on the older browsers. Now using a JavaScript module loader. Manually keeping track to set of files and making sure that the HTML file contains the correct set of script elements is an error prone process. You are likely to add a script element that includes a file with the .ts extension rather than its.js counterpart or forget to add a script element for a new file. It is also hard to correctly order the script elements. Browsers execute the content of JavaScript file in the order defined by the script elements 
in the html document and it is easy to create a situation where code in the file loaded by one script element depends on functionality loaded by another script element that the browser has yet to load managing the javascript content in an application can be simplified by using a module loader which takes responsibility for detecting and resolving dependencies between javascript file loading them and ensuring their content are executed in the right order the package.json file i created at the start of the include that system module loader i explain how to create javascript modules and how the system js module loader is used in where i also use it to load angular and some of the libraries it depends on the most important change in the listening is this statement now understanding the basic workflow to understand the way that the different workflow steps relate to one another add a statement to the primer.ts file when you save the change to the primer.ts file the process will occur number 1 the typescript compiler will detect the change to the primer.ts file and compile it to generate a new prime dot js file that can run in any browser the development http server detects the change to the primer dot js file and signals the browser to reload the html document the browser reloads the html documents and starts processing the elements it contains it loads the javascript files specified by the script element in the html document including those for the javascript module loader the javascript module loader processes its configuration and asynchronously request the primer.js file from the http server now using a statement the basic javascript building block is the statement each statement represent a single command and statements are usually terminated by a semicolon the semicolon is optional but using them makes your code easier to read and allows for multiple statement on a single line the browser execute each statement in turn in this example all the statement simply write message to the console now defining and using function when the browser receives javascript code either directly through a script element or indirectly through the module loader it executes the statements it contains in the order in which they have been defined this is what happened the previous the module loader loaded the primer.js file and the statement it contains were executed one by one all of which wrote a message to the console you can also package statements into a function which will not be executed until the browser encounter a statement that invokes the function defining a function simple use the let keyword followed by the name you want to give the function 
followed by the equal sign and the function keyword followed by parenthesis the statements you want the function to contain and enclosed between bears in the listening i use the name my function and the function contain a single statement that write a message to the javascript console now define function there are two way in which you can define function in javascript the approach i used in listening is known as a function expression the same function can console also be defined This is known as a function declaration. The result is the same. A function called my function that writes a message to the console. The difference is how the function are processed by the browser when a JavaScript file is loaded. Function declaration are processed before the code in a JavaScript file is executed. Which means you can use a statement that calls a function before it is defined this works because the browser finds the function declaration when it passes the javascript file and sets up the function before the remaining statement are executed that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course in this lecture first i am telling you about defining functions with parameters javascript allows you to define parameters for functions i added two parameter to the my function called name and whether javascript is a dynamically typed language which means you do not have to declare the data type of the parameters when you define the function i will come back a dynamic type when i cover javascript variable now using default and reset parameters the number of arguments you provide when you invoke a function does not need to match the number of parameters in the function If you call the function with fewer arguments than it has parameters, then the value of any parameters you have not supplied valued for it undefined, which is a special JavaScript value. If you call the function with more arguments, then there are parameters. Then the additional arguments are ignored. The consequence of this is that you cannot create two function with the same name and different parameters and expect JavaScript to differentiate between them based on the arguments you provide when invoking the function. This is called polymorphism and although it is supported in language such as Java and c hash it is not available in javascript instead if you define two function with the same name then the second definition replace the first there are two ways that you can modify a function to respond to a mismatch between the number of parameters it defines and the number of arguments used in book it default parameters deal with the situation where there are fewer arguments than parameters and allow you to provide a default value for the parameters for which there are no arguments the rest parameter must be the last parameter defined by the function and it is named is prefixed with an 
ellipsis the rest parameter is an array to which any extra arguments will be assigned now defining function that return result you can return result from function using the return keyword function defines one parameter and uses it to produce a result i invoke the function and pass the result as the argument to the console.log function notice that you do not have to declare that the function will return a result or denote the data type of the result now using function as arguments to other functions javascript functions can be passed around as objects which means you can use one function as the argument to another as demonstrated the my function define a parameter called name function that it invokes to get the value to insert into the string that it returns i pass a function that returns adam as the arguments to my function which produce output function can be chained together building up more complex functionality from a small and easily tested pieces of code now using arrow function arrow function also known as fat arrow functions or lambda expression are an alternative way of defining function and are often used to define functions that are used only as arguments to other functions this function perform the same work as the ones in listening there are three parts to an arrow function the input parameter then an equal sign and a greater than sign and finally the function result the return keyword are curly braces are required only if the arrow function need to execute more than one statement there are more arrow function in this lecture now using variables and types the let keyword is used to declare variables and optionally assign a value to the variable in a single statement variables declared with let are scope to the region of code in which they are defined there are three statement that use the let keyword to define a variable called message the scope of each variable is limited to the region of code that it is defined this may seem like an odd example but there is another keyword that can be used to declare variables var The let keyword is a relatively new addition to the JavaScript specification that is intended to address some addition in the way var we have The problem is that the var keyword create variables whose scope is the containing function which means that all the references to message are referring to the same variable this can cause unexpected results for even experienced javascript developers and is the reason that the more conventional let keyword was introduced 
you are ready to use let or var in angular development and this is the using variables and types i am now covering and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course in this lecture i am telling about routing basics you can think of a spa as a collection of states such as home state product details state and shipping state each state represents a different view of the same spa so far the online auction has only one view state the home page the online auction has a navigation bar on top a search from on the left and a footer at the bottom and you want this components to remain visible all the time the rest of the page consists of a content area that displays the auction courses one and several auction product component you will reuse this content area for displaying different views based on the users action to do this you will need to configure the router so it can display different views in the outlet replacing one view with another this content area is represented by the tag router outlet you will be assigning a component for each view that you want to display in this area you did not create a parent component that would encapsulate the carousel and auction product but by the end of this you will refactor the code to create a home component to serve as a parent of the carousel and product you will also product detail component to represent each product detail at any given time the user will see either home component or product detail component in the router underscore outlet area the router is responsible for managing client side navigation and we will provide a high level overview of how the router is made up of in the non spa world site navigation is implemented as a series of request to a server which refreshes the entire page by sending the appropriate html documents to the browser with spa the code for rendering component is already on the client and you just need to replace one view with another now location strategies at any given time the browser's location bar displays the url of the current view a url can contain different parts it starts with a protocol followed by a domain name and it may include a part number parameters that need to be passed to the server a question mark changing any character in the preceding url results in a new request to the server in spas you need the ability to modify the url without making a server side request so the application can locate the 
proper view on the client. Angular offers two location strategies for implementing client side navigation. Hash location strategy A hash sign is added to the URL and the URL segment after the hash uniquely identifies the route to be used as a web page fragment. These strategies work with all browsers, include the old ones. Path location strategy. This history API based strategy is supported only in browsers that support HTML5. This is the default location strategy in Angular. A sample URL that uses hash based navigation, changing any character to the right of the hash sign does not cause a direct server side request, but navigates to the view represents by the path after the hash. The hash sign serves as a separator between the base URL and the client site location of the required content. Try to navigate a SPA like a Gmail and watch the URL for the inbox it look. Now go to the sent folder and the hash portion of the URL will change from inbox to send. The client side JavaScript code invoke the necessary function to display the send view. But why does the Gmail app still shows you the loading message when you switch to the send box? The JavaScript code of the send view can still make Ajax request to the server to get the new data, but it does not load any additional code markup or CSS from the server. The browser's history API allows you to move back and forth through the user's navigation history as well as programmatically manipulate the history stack. Manipulating the browser history in the Mozilla developer network. Consider the URL http double forward slash my site dot com a zero a zero product forward slash paste forward slash three. The product forward slash paste forward slash three URL segment can be pushed to the base URL programmatically without using the hashtag. If the user navigates from page 3 to 4, the application code will push product forward slash page forward slash 4, saving the previous product forward slash page forward slash 3 state in the browser. Angular spares you from invoke push state explicitly. You just need to configure the URL segments and map them to the corresponding component. With the history API based location strategy, you need to tell another how to use as a base URL in your application. So it can properly append the client side URL segment. You can do it in one of two ways. Add the base tag to the header of index.html such as base herifer. Assign a value of the f base here angular constant in the root module and the use it as a provider's value. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the course. In this lecture, I am telling you about running the sample application.
Typically, the code that comes with each has several sample application. To run a particular application, you will need to make a one-line change in the configuration file of system.js to specify the name of the main script that you want to run. To run this application using the code that comes with, make sure that the main script that bootstraps your root module is properly mapped in systemjs.config.js. The same applies to the other sample application in this and other. The main script of this application is located in the main.ts file in the directory samples. To run this app, make sure that the systemjs.config.js file list main.ts in the app package and then start the live server from the project root directory. Now systemjs and on the fly transpiling. TypeScript offers an elegant declarative syntax for implementing many Angular features. Including routing, we use syntax.js in our code samples and the transpiling of TypeScript into JavaScript is done on the fly when the application code is loaded into the browser. But what if the application does not work as expected? If you open the developer tools panel in other browser, you will see that each file with the extension .ts has a corresponding .ts transpiled file. This is a transpiled version of the code that may be handy if you need to see the actual JavaScript code that runs in the browser. Angular comes with a location class that allows you to navigate to an absolute URL by invoking its go, forward and back methods along with some others. Location should be used only if you need to interact with the URL outside of the Angular router. Now navigation to routes with navigate. In the basic underscore routing code, example in the section you arrange the navigation using router link in HTML and code tags. But what if you need to arrange navigation programmatically without asking the user to click a link? Let's modify that code sample to navigate by using the navigate method. You will add a bottom that will also navigate to the product detail component. By this time, no HTML and course will be used. Listening will invoke the navigate method on the router instance that will be injected into the root component via its constructor. For simplicity, you place the module and routes declaration, the bootstrap and the app component in the same file. But in real world projects, you should keep them separate as you did in the section. Now, handling 404 errors. If the user enters a non-existent URL in your application, the router will not be able to find a matching route and will print an error message on the browser's console, leaving the user to wonder why no navigation is happening. Consider creating an application component that will be displayed 
whenever the application cannot find the matching component for example you could create a component named underscore 404 component and configure it now whenever the router cannot match the url to any component it will render the content of underscore 404 component instead you can see it in action by running the application main with 404.ts that comes just enter the non-existent url in the browser now passing data to routes the basic routing application showed how you can display different components in a predefined outlet on the window but you often need not only to display a component but also to pass some data to it if you navigate from the home to the product detail route you need to pass the product id to the component that represents the destination route such as product detail component the component that represents the destination route can receive past parameters via its constructor arguments of type activated route beside the past parameters activated route stores the routes url segment the outlet now extracting parameters from activated route when the user navigates to the product detail route you need to pass the product id to this route to display details for the particular product let's modify the code of the application in the section so root component can pass the product id to product detail component the new version of this component will be called product detail component param and angular will inject an object of type activate route into it the activate route object will contain the information about the component loaded the activate route object will contain all the parameters that are being passed to the component you just need to declare the constructor's argument specifying its type and angular will know how to instantiate it and inject this object in listening 3.8 you will change the configuration of the product route and route link to ensure that the value of the product id will be passed to the product detail component param component if the user choose to go this route this new version of the app is called main param.ts and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course in this lecture first i am telling you about the dependency injection and inversion of control patterns Design patterns are recommendation for how to solve certain common task. A given design pattern can be implemented differently depending on the software you use. In this section, we will briefly introduce two design pattern, a dependency injection and inversion of control. Now, the dependency injection pattern if you have ever written a function that takes an object as an argument you can say that you wrote a program that instantiated this object and inject it into the function imagine a fulfillment center that ship products an application that keeps track of shipped products can create a product object and invoke a function that creates and saves a shipment record the create shipment function 
डिपेंड्स ऑन द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ एन इंस्टेंस ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट इन अदर वर्ड्स द क्रिएट शिपमेंट फांगशन हेज ए डिपेंडेंसि प्रोडक्ट बाट द फांगशन इट सेल्फ डज नट नो हाउ टू क्रिएट प्रोडक्ट द कलिंग स्क्रिप्ट शुड साम हाउ क्रिएट एंड गिव दिस अबजेक्ट एज एन आर्गुमेंट टू द फांगशन टेक्निकाली यू आर डिकलिंग द क्रिएशन अफ द प्रोडक्ट अबजेक्ट फ्रम इट्स यूज बट बोथ अफ द प्रिसिडिंग लाइन्स अफ कोड आर लोकेटेड इन द सेम स्क्रिप्ट सो इट इज नट रियल डिकलिंग इफ यू नीड टू रिप्लेस प्रोडक्ट उथ मक प्रोडक्ट इट इज ए स्मल कोड चेन्ज इन दिस सीम्पल एक्साम्पल What if the create shipment function had three dependencies and each of those dependencies had its own dependencies in that case creating a different set of object for create shipment would require many more manual code changes would it possible to ask somehow to create instances of dependencies for you This is what the dependency injection pattern is about. If object A depend on a object of type B, object A will not explicitly instantiate object B. Rather, it will have B injected from the operational environment. Object A just needs to declare I need an object of type B. Could someone please give it to me? The words of type are important here. Object A does not request a, a specific implementation of the object and will be happy as long as the injected object is of type B. Now the inversion of control pattern. Inversion of control is a more general pattern than DI. Rather than making your application use some API from a framework, the framework creates and supplies the objects that the application needs. The IOC pattern can be implemented in different ways, and DI is one of the ways of providing the required object. Angular plays the role of the IOC container and can provide the required objects according to your components declaration. Now benefits of dependency injection. Before we explore the syntax of Angular's implementation of DI, let's look at the benefit of having objects injected versus incentivated them with a new operator angular offers a mechanism that helps with registering and instantiating component dependencies in short di helps you write code in a loosely coupled way and makes your code more testable and reusable Say you have a product component that gives product detail using the product service class. Without DI, your product component needs to know how to instantiate the product service class. This can be done multiple ways, such as using new calling gate instance on a singleton object or invoking. create product service on some factory class in any case product component becomes tightly coupled with product service if you need to reuse product component in another application that uses a different service to get product details you must modify the code di allows you to decouple application components by sparing them from the need to know how to create their dependencies
in angular application you register object for di by a specifying providers a providers is an interaction to angular about how to create an instance of an object for future injection into a target component or directive angular uses the concept of a token which is an arbitrary name representing an object to be injected usually the token's name matches the type of the object to be injected so the preceding code snippet instructs angular to provide a product service token using the class of the same name using an object with the property provide you can map the same token to different values or object of the product service while someone else is developing a real service class now that you have added the providers property to the add component annotation of product component angular sti module will know that it has to instantiate an object of type product service product component does not need to know which concrete implementation of the product service type to use it will use whatever object is specified as a provider the reference to the product service object will be injected via the constructors arguments and there is no need to explicitly instantiate product service in products component and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course in this lecture first i am telling you about injectors and providers now that you have had a brief introduction to dependency injection as a general software engineering design pattern let's go over the specifics of implementing di in angular in particular we will go over such components as injectors and providers each component can have an injector instance capable of injecting objects or primitive values into a component or service any angular application has a root injector available to all of its modules to let the injector know how to inject you specify the provider an injector will inject the object or value specified in the provider into the constructor of a component although eagerly loaded modules do not have either own injectors a lazy loaded module has its own subroot injector that's a direct child of the application root injector providers allow you to map a custom type to a concrete implementing of this type you can specify the providers either inside the components at component decorator or as a property of at ng module as in every code sample so far in angular you can inject data only via a constructors arguments if you see a class with a no argument constructor it is a guarantee that nothing is injected into this component you will be using product component and product service for all the code samples in this 
if your application has a class implementing a particular type you can specify a provider object for this class during the app module bootstrap now injection with typescript versus es6 typescript simplifies the syntax of injection into a component because it does not require you to use any di annotations with the constructor arguments all you need to do is specify the type of the constructor's argument this works because any component has an annotation at component and because the typescript compiler is configured with the option emit decorator metadata true angular will automatically generate all required metadata for the object to be injected because you use syntax system js for on the fly type script transpiling you can add the type script compiler option in system config.js the provide property maps the token to the method of instantiating the injectable object this example instruct angular to create an instance of the mock product service class wherever the product service token is used as a dependency but the object creator can use a class a factor function a string or a special class for instantiation and injection now how to declare a provider to map a token to an implementation of a class use the object with the use class property if you have a factor function that instantiate object based on certain criteria use an object with the use factory property which specify a factory function that knows how to instantiate required objects the factory function fat arrow that knows how to instantiate required object the factory function can have an optional argument with dependencies if they exist to provide a string with a simple injectable value use the object with the use value property now a sample application with angular di now that you have seen a number of code snippets related to angular di let's build a, a small application that will bring all the pieces together we want to prepare you for using di in the online auction application now injecting a product service let's create a simple application that use product component to render product details and product service to supply data about the product if you use the downloadable code that comes with the this app is located in the main basic.ts file in the di underscore samples directory you will build an application that procedure the phase app module bootstrap app component which includes product component which is depend on product service note the import and export statement the class definition of product service starts with the export statement to enable other components to access its content product component includes the import statement providing the name of the class and the module being imported
The provider attribute defines on the component level instructs Angular to provide an instance of the product service class when requested. Product service may communicate with some server. Requesting details for the product selected on the web page, but we will skip this part of now and concentrate on how this service can be injected into product component. Now injecting the help service. Often a service will need to make an HTTP request to get the requested data. Product component depends on product service which injected using the Angular DI mechanism. If product service needs to make an HTTP request, it will have an HTTP object as its own dependency. Product service will need to import the HTTP object injection at ng module must import HTTP module which define HTTP providers. The product service class should have a constructor for injecting the HTTP object. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome to the course. In this lecture, first I am telling you about data binding. Data binding allows you to connect the data from your application with the UI. The data binding syntax lowers the amount of manual coding. Briefly introduce the data binding syntax and you used it in almost every example in the lecture. In Angular, data binding is implemented in a unidirectional way. The one way could mean either applying data changes from the components properties to the UI or binding UI events with the components method. For example, whenever a component's product title property is updated, the view is automatically updated by using the syntax in the template. Product title. Similarly, when a user type in an input field, the event binding invokes an event handler on the right side of the equal sign. In template, both double curly braces in the text and square bracket in HTML elements attributes result in property binding. Angular binds the interpolated value string with injected expression value to the text content property of the corresponding DOM node. Now, what is wrong with AngularJS two-way binding? In AngularJS, data changes on the view automatically updated the underlying data, which also triggers an update of the view. In other words, Angular.js uses two-way data binding under the hood. Although having two-way data binding in forms simplifies coding, using it to bind values in various application scripts may substantially slow performance in large application. That is because Angular.js internally keeps a list of all data binding expression on the page and a browser event can result in Angular.js checking the list of the expression over and over again until it ensures the everything in the sign. During this process, a single property can be updated multiple times. Although Angular does not use two-way data binding by default, you can still implement it. Now it is your choice. Note the frameworks. We will go over several flavors of data binding. 
event binding to invoke a function that handles this event attribute binding to update the text value of an html elements attribute property binding to update the value of the dom elements property template binding to transfer the view template to a data binding with ng model now binding to events to assign an event handler function to an event you need to put the event name in parenthesis in the components template when the event specified in parenthesis is triggered the expression in double quotes is reevaluated in the preceding example the expression or functions so they are invoked each time the corresponding event is triggered if you are interested in analyzing the properties of the event object at the seventh argument to the handler function in particular the target property of the event object represents the dom node where the event occurred the instance of the event object will be available only within the binding scope now binding to a properties and attributes each html elements is represented by a tag with attributes and the browser creates a dom object with properties for each tag the user sees dom object on the screen as they are rendered by the browser you should have a good understanding of what exists at any given moment in three distinct areas the html documents the dom object the rendered ui as html document consists of elements represented by tags with attributes which are always a string the browser instantiate html elements as dom object that have properties and are rendered on the web page as a ui however the values of the dom nodes properties change the page is re-rendered now when property binding is used property binding is used in these two scenarios a component needs to reflect the state of the model in the view a parent component needs to update a property of its child we use the word attributes in the context of the html document attribute bindings are rarely used because the browser uses html to build the dom tree after that it works mainly with properties of the dom object but there are some cases when you may need to use attribute bindings for example the hidden attribute is not supported in internet explorer 10 and it would not create a corresponding dom attribute so if you need to toggle the visibility of a component using css styles attribute binding will help another example is integration with the google polymer framework you can only do it via attribute binding like property binding an attribute binding is denoted by placing an attribute name in a square bracket but to let angular known that you want to bind to an attribute you have to add the prefix attar now simplifying code with destructing 
In Appendix A, we will cover the ES6 distracting feature, which is also supported by TypeScript. Distracting could simplify the code of the event handler function. The on input event function receive the event object and then a line extract the value from the target property. With distracting syntax, you can eliminate the line that exact the value of event dot target. Using the curly braces in the argument of this function is spent instructing to the function. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the course. In this lecture, first I am telling you about binding in templates. Say you need to conditionally hide or show a certain HTML element. You can do so by binding a boolean flag to a hidden attribute or a display style of the element. Depending on the flag's value, this element will be either shown or hidden. But the object that represents this element remains in the DOM tree. Angular offers a structural directives that changes the DOM's structure by removing elements from or adding elements to it. NGIF can conditionally remove an element from or add onto the DOM tree. NG for loops throw an array and adds an element to the DOM tree for each array element. NG switch adds an element to the DOM tree from a set of possible elements based on some condition. Using template binding, you can instruct Angular to do this for you. Removing element can be better than hiding them if you want to ensure that your application will not waste time supporting the behavior of this element. Now HTML templates and Angular directives. The HTML template tag in the Mozilla Developer Network, documentation is not a typical tag because the browser ignores its content unless the application indicates a script to parse and add it to the DOM. Angular offers so-called shortcut syntax for directives. They start with an asterisk such as asterisk ng if or asterisk ng for when angular parser sees a directives that start with an asterisk it converts this directive into an html fragment that uses a template tag and is recognizable by browsers indicates one span and one template and illustrates two flavors of template binding using the ngif directives depending on the flex value the span elements either add to the dome or remove from it unlike other angular binding the template binding transform the view template the code in listening 5 to Conditionally adds the message about the flex value to or remove it from the DOM tree. Now, two-way data binding. Two-way data binding is a simple way to keep the view and the model in sign. Whether the view or the model change first, both are immediately synchronized. You have learned that one-way binding from the UI to an Angular component is arranged by surrounding an event name with parentheses. One-way binding from a component to the UI is denoted by surrounding an HTML. In some cases, you may still want to use two-way binding, 
the longer way of combining the two preceding example angular also offer a shorter combined notation in particular angular has a ng model directive that you can use for two way binding you can still see my component property but which event does it handle in this example the ng model directive is used with the input element this event is the default trigger for synchronizing ui changes in the html input element with the underlying model but the driving event can be different depending on the ui control being used with ng model this is controlled internally by a special control value accessor angular interface which serves as a bridge between a control and a native element control value accessor is used to create custom from controls two way binding was popular with forms where we needed to synchronize values from the from fields with the properties of underlying model object now reactive programming and observable reacting programming is about creating responsive event driven application where an observable event stream is pushed to subscriber in software engineering observer or observable is a well known pattern and it is a good fit in any asynchronous processing scenario but reactive programming is a lot more than just an implementation of the observe or observable pattern the observable streams can be cancelled they can notify about the end of a stream and the data pushed to the subscriber can be transformed on the way from the source to the subscriber by applying various operators now what are observable and observes an observer is an object that handles a data stream pushed by an observable function there are two main types of observable hot and cold a cold observable starts streaming data when some code invokes a subscriber function on it a hot observable streams data even if there is no subscriber instead in the data a script that subscribers to an observable provides the observer object that knows that to do with the stream element to be precise an observable stream known how to do three things emit the next element throw an error send a single that the streaming is over now from array to iterable and observable javascript has a number of useful method for working with arrays of data such as this map allows you to apply a function to each element of the array with map you can transform on array into another without changing the number of elements filter allows you to apply a function to each element of an array filtering out elements by applying some business logic reduce allows you to produce an aggregate value from an array's element a stream is a collection of data given to your application over time es6 introduced the concept of iterable and iterators that let you treat an array as a data collection and iterate through its element on at time that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course 
in this lecture first i am telling you about observable event streams each event is represented by the event object containing properties describing the event angular applications can handle standard drum events and can create and emit custom events as well a handler function for an event can be declared with an optional servant parameter that contains a javascript object with properties describing the event with a standard drum events you can use any functions or properties of the browser's event object in some cases you would not be interested in reading the event object properties such as when the only button on the page is clicked and this is all that matters in other cases you may want to know a specific information such as what character was entered in the input field when the key up event was dispatched the preceding code sniffs accessing the value property of the input element by using event dot target which points at the element that dispatches the event but angular allows you to get the html element right in the template by declaring a template local variable that will always hold a reference to its html element the code fragment declares a my search field local template variable extract the value of the hosting html element and passes it to the event handler function rather than the reference to the event object note that the hash sign is needed only to declare a local variable in the template you do not need the hash when using this variable in the javascript portion of the code if your code dispatches a custom event it can carry application a specific data and the event object can be strongly typed A traditional JavaScript application treats a dispatches event as a one-time deal. For example, one-click result in one function invocation. Angular offers another approach when you consider event observable stream of data happening over time. Handling observable stream is an important technique to master. So let's see what it's all about. By subscribing to a stream, your code expresses an interest in receiving the stream's elements. During subscription, you specify the code to be invoked when the next element is emitted, and optionally the code for error processing and stream completion. often you will specify a number of chain operations and then invoke the subscriber method how does all this apply to event coming from the ui you could use event binding that handles multiple key up events and handles the value of last stock symbol Is not this technique good enough for handling multiple event? Imagine that the preceding code is used to get a price quote for the APL stock. After the user type the first a, the get a stock price function will make a promise based request to the server, which will return the price of a. If there is such a stock. then the user enters the second a which result in another server request for the 
double a price quota, the process repeats the AAP and AAPL. This is not what you want, so you can unarrange a 500 millisecond delay to give the user enough time to type several letters. The set timeout function comes to the rescue. What if the user types slowly and during the 500 millisecond interval manages only to enter AAP, the first request for AAP goes to the server and 500 millisecond later the second request for AAPL is sent. A program cannot cancel the first HTTP request if the server returns a promises object. So you will keep your finger crossed that your users type quickly and do not overload the server with unwanted requested. Now cancelling observable. One of the benefit of observable over promises is that the former can be cancelled. We offered one scenario in which a typo might result is useless server request. Implementing master detail views in another use case for a request cancellation. Say a user click in row in a list of product to see the product detail that must be retrieved from the server. Then they change their mind and click another row with issue another server request. In that case, the pending request should ideally be cancelled. Let's look at how you can cancel pending request by creating an application that issue HTTP as the user type in the input field. You will handle two observable stream. Number one, the observable stream produced by the search field. Number two, the observable stream produced by the HTTP request issued while the user is typing in the search field. Now pipes. A pipe is a temple element that allows you to transform a value into a desired output. A pipe is sacrificed by adding the vertical bar and the pipe name right after the value to be transformed. Angular comes with a number of predefined pipes and each pipe has a class that implements its functionality as well as the name you can use in the template. Uppercase pipe allows you to convert an input string into a uppercase by using uppercase in the template. Data pipe lets you display a data in different format by using data. Currency pipe transforms a number into a desired current by using currency. Assign pipe will unwrap the data from the provided observable stream by using assign. Some pipe do not require input parameter and some do. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the course. In this lecture, first I am telling about intercomponent communication. A view that consists of a number of components that are numbered and have different shapes for easier reference. Some of the components contain other components and other are pairs. To abstract this from any particular UI framework, we avoided using HTML elements like input fields drop downs and buttons but you can explore it this into a view of your real world application when you design a view that consists of multiple component the less they know about each other the better 
say a user clicks the button in component for which has to initiate some actions in component 5 it is possible to implement this scenario without component knowing that component exists you have seen already examples of loosely coupling components by using dependency injection now input and output properties thing of an angular components as a black box with outlets some of them are marked as at input and other are marked as at output you can create a component with as many inputs and outputs as you want if an angular component needs to receive values from the outside world you can bind the procedures of these values to the corresponding inputs of the component whom are they received from the component does not have to know the component just needs to know what to do with these values when they are provided if a component needs to communicate values to the outside world it can emit events through its outputs whom are they omitted to the component does not have to know whoever is interested can listen or subscribe to the event that a component emits the input properties of a component are decorated with that input and are used to get data from the parent component imagine that you want to create a ui component for placing orders to buy stocks it will know how to connect to the stock exchange but that is irrelevant in the context of this discussion of input properties you want to ensure that order component receive data from other component via its properties marked with at input and notation you will also pass quantity to the order component but you will not use binding with quantity so you can see the case when a parent needs to pass to the child a value that will not be changing you will leave of the binding mechanism by not surrounding the quantity attribute in the order processor tag with a square bracket because you do not use binding for the quantity attribute the value 100 arrives in order component as a string if you want to preserve the types using binding if you change the value of a stock symbol or quantity in the order component the change will not affect the property values of the parent component property binding is undirectional from parent to child the next question is how can component intercept the moment when one of its input property changes A simple way is to change the input property to a scatter. You use a stock symbol in the template of the component. So you need the getter as well because you have a public setter. Rename the variable to underscore stock symbol and make it private. When this application starts, all input variables are initialized with the default values and the change detection mechanism qualifies the initialization as a change of the bound variable a stock symbol the setter is invoked and to avoid sending an order for the undefined stock symbol you check its value in the setter angular component can dispatch custom event using the event 
emitter object. This event can be handled either in the component or by its parent event emitter is a subclass of subject that can serve as both observable and observer. In other words, event emitter can dispatch custom event using the emit method as well as consume observable using its subscribe method. Because this section is about sending data from a component to the outside world. We will focus on dispatching custom events here. Now event bubbling. As we write this, Angular does not offer a syntax to support event bubbling. For price quarter component, this means if you try to listen to the last price, even not on this component, but on its parent, the event will not bubble up there. If event bubbling is important to your application, do not use event emitter. Use native DOM events instead. Price quarter component that handle event bubbling without using Angular's event emitter. In the preceding application, Angular injection a reference to the DOM element that respects price quarter using element refer and then the custom event in dispatched by invoking element dot native element dot dispatch event event bubbling will work here but keep in mind that this code become browser specific and will not work with non html renders now the mediator pattern when you design a component based ui each component should be self contained and component should not rely on the existence of other ui components such loosely coupled components can be implemented using the mediator design pattern which according to wikipedia defines how to set of object interact imagine a child playing with bubbling bricks that do not know about each other today this child can use some blocks to build a house and tomorrow they will construct a boat from the same component. The role of the mediator is to ensure that components properly fit together according to the task at hand while remaining loosely coupled. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the course. In this lecture, first I am telling you about an alternative implementation of mediator. In this lecture, you show how sibling components use their parent as a mediator. If components do not have the same parent or are not displayed at the same time, you can use an injectable service as a mediator. However the component is created, the mediator service is injected and the component can subscribe to event emitted by the service. If you had like to see this in action, read the providing search result to home component section in the hand on exercise. Check the code of the product service that plays the role of the mediator. The service defines the search event, event emitter variable which is used by search component to emit the data entered by the user. Home component subscribe to the search event variable to receive the text entered by the user in the search form. Now changing templates at runtime with ng content. In some cases you will want to be able to dynamically change the comment of a component's template at runtime. In AngularJS, this was known as transclusion, but the new term for it is projection. In Angular, you can project a firm gate of the parent component's template 
onto its child by using the ngContent directive. The syntax is pretty simple and required to a step. In the child component templates, include the tag. In the pet parent component, include the HTML fragment that you want to project into the child's insertion point between tag representing the child component. We will also use the example to illustrate how the shadow dome and angular views encapsulation work. Have you noticed that both parent and child components use the dot warper style in their outmost dive elements? In a regular HTML page, this would mean both parent and child would be rendered with the same style. We will show that it is possible to encapsulate a style in child component so that do not conflict with parent style if their name are the same. Note that the dot wrapper style from the parents type was not applied to the child type also using the dot wrapper style which is rendered in a light green background. The child shadow root acts as a well protecting the child's style from inheriting the parent style. Now component life cycle. Various events happen during the life cycle of an angular component. When a component is created, the change detection mechanism brings monitoring the component. The component is initialized, added to the DOM and rendered so the user can see it. After that, the state of the component may change, causing re-rendering of the UI and finally the component is destroyed. The user sees the component after the initialization phase is complete. Then the change detection mechanism ensures that the component's properties stay in sign with its UI. If the component is removed from the DOM tree as a result of the router's navigation or a structural directives, Angular initiates the destroy phase. The constructor is invoked first when the instance of the component is being created but the component's properties are not initialized yet in the constructor. Now, when not to write code in constructor? In the online auction application, you inject product service in the constructor of home component and invoke the get products method right here. If the get products method needed to use values of the component properties, you had moved the invocation of this method to ng on init to ensure that all properties were initialized by the time you called get products. To other reasons to move code from the constructor to ng on init is to keep the constructor code light without hitting any long running synchronous function from there. Now using ng on changes. Let's illustrate a components lifecycle hooks using ng on changes. These examples will include parent and child components and the latter will have to input properties. Getting an user. The first property is a string and the second is an object with one property name to understand why the ng on change callback may or may not be invoked. You need to be familiar with the concept of mutable versus immutable object. 
now mutable versus immutable javascript string are immutable which mean when a string value is created in memory it will never change the first line created the value hello at a certain memory location such as at 287651 the second line does not change the value at that address but created the new string hello mary at a different location such as 28647 now you have two string in memory and each of them is immutable what happened to the variable getting it values changed because it pointed initially at one memory location and then to another javascript objects are mutable which means after the object instance is created at a certain memory location it stays there even if the values of its property changes after the first line the object is created and the user variable points at a certain memory location such as at 277500 the string john has been created at another memory location such as at 287600 and the user dot name variable stores the reference to this address after the second line is executed the new string mary is created at another location such as 287700 and the user dot name variable stores the reference to this new address but the user variable still stores the memory address at 277500 That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the course. In this lecture, first time telling you about template driven versus react approaches. In a template driven approach from our fully programmed in the components template. The template defines the structure of the form. the format of its field and the validation rules in contrast in a reactive approach you create the form model programmatically in the code the template can be either statically defined and bound to an exciting form model or dynamically generated based on the model You will familiar with the Angular Forms API and the various ways of working with forms and applying data validation. Now overview of HTML forms. HTML provides basic features for displaying forms, validating entered values, and submitting the data to the server. but html forms may not be good enough for real world business applications which need to way to programmatically process the inter data apply custom validation rules display user friendly error message transform the format of the inter data and choose the way data is submitted to the server for business applications One of the most important consideration when choosing a web framework is how well is handled forms. We will evaluate a standard HTML form features using a sample user registration form and we will define a set of requirement that a modern web application needs to fulfill users acceptation. now a standard browser features you may be wondering what you need from an application framework other than data binding if html already allows you to validate and submit forms to answer this question let's review an html from that use only standard browser features the form contains a button on the 
फोर इनपुट फिल्डस यूजार नेम एस एस एन पासवर्ड एंड पासवर्ड कन्फार्मेशन यूजार्स कैन इंटार हायर एवर भैलूस दे वांट नो इनपुट व्यलिडेशन इज एप्लाइड हेयर हेन दूजार क्लिक द सबमिट बाटन द फाउंड भैलू आर सबमिटेड टू द सार्वर्स इन पॉइंट यूजिंग एच टी टी पी पोस्ट एंड द पेज इज द डिफल्ट एच टी एम एल फ्रम बिहेवियर इज नट ए गुड फिट फर ए एस पी ए हुईज टाइपिकाली नीड्स द फांगशनिटी दैट इज व्यलिडेशन रूल्स शुड बी एप्लाइड टू इंडिविजुअल इनपुट फिल्ड इरोर मेसेजेस शुड बी डिसप्लेड नेक्स्ट टू द इनपुट फिल्ड दैट कजेस द प्रब्लेम्स डिपेन्डेंट फिल्डस शुड बी व्यलिडेट अल टूगेदार दिस फर्म हेव पास एंड पासवर्ड कन्फार्मेशन फिल्ड सो हेन एवर आईदार of them is changed both field should be revalidated the application should be in control of the value submitted to the server when the user clicks the submit button the application should invoke an event handler function to pass the from values The application can validate the values or change their format before sending the submit request. The application should decide how the data is submitted to the server, whether it is a regular HTTP request, an AJAX requested, or a web stock message. HTML validation attribute and semantic input types partially satisfy the first two requirement several standard validation attributes allow you to valid individual input fields required pattern max length mid max step and so on you use a regular expression to restrict when can be entered in this field when the user clicks the submit button the form will be validated before the submit request is sent there are a number of problem with this message that is it is too vague and does not help the user identify and fix the problem as soon as the input field loses focus the error message disappears this message format likely or not match other styles in the application this input field prevents users from submitting invalid values but it does not let you provide a decent user experience by helping the user with friendly client side validation now enabling forms api support now angular from api there are two approaches to working with forms in angular template driven and reactive these two approaches are exposed as two different apis in angular with the template driven approach the form model is defined in the components template using directives because you are limited to the html syntax while defining the form model the template driven approaches suits only simple scenario now enabling from api support both type of forms template driven and reactive need to be explicitly enabled before you start using them to enable template driven forms add forms module from angular or forms to 
the import list of the ng module the user the forms api for reactive forms use reactive from module now template driven forms as we mentioned earlier you can use only directives to define a model in the template driven approach but what directive can you use directive comes with from module ng module ng model group and ng form now directives overview we will briefly describe the three main directives from from module ng module ng model group and ng form ng form is the directive that represent the entire forms it is automatically attached to every element ng form implicitly created an instance of the form group class that represent the model and store the form data and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course in this lecture first i am telling you about enriching the html from let's refactor the simple user registration from listing 71 there it was a plain html from that did not use any angular features now you will warp it into an angular component add validation logic and enable programmatic handling of the submit event Let's start by refactoring the template and then move on the type skip part. First modify the from element. You declare a local template variable f and points at the ng from object attached to the from element. You need this variable to access the from's properties such as values and valid and to check whether the forms has errors of a specific type you also configure the event handler of for the submit event emitted by ng form you do not want to listen to the standard submit event and ng from intercept the submit event and the rest of its propagation this prevents the from beginning automatically submitted to the server resulting in a pass reload instead ng from emits its own ng submit event the on submit method is the event handler it is defined as the component instance method in temple driver forms on submit takes on argument the forms value which is a plain javascript object that gives the values of all the field on the form next you change the username and ssn field now reactive forms unlike in the template driven approaches creating a reactive form is a two step process first you need to create a model programmatically in the code and then you link html elements to that model using directives in the template now from model the form model is an underlying data structure that keeps the forms data it is construct out of a special classes defined in the 
add angular or forms module from control from group and from array from control is an automatic from unit usually it corresponds to a single input element but it can also represent a more complex ui component like a calendar or a slider from control keeps the current value of the html element it corresponds to the element's validity status and whether it has been modified from group usually represents a part of the from and is a collection of from controls from group aggregates the values and the statuses of each from control in the group if one of the control in a group is invalid the entire group become invalid it is convenient from managing related field on the from from group is also used to represent the entire from for example if a data range is represented by two data input field they can be combined into a single group to obtain the data range as a single value and display an error if either of the inter details is invalid now from directives the reactive approach uses a completely different set of directives than template driven forms the directives for reactive form come with reactive forms module all reactive directives are prefixed with the from integer string so you can easily distinguish the reactive from the template driven approach just by looking at the template reactive directives are not exportable which means you cannot create a variable in the template that references an instance of a directive this is done intentionally to clearly separate the two approaches in template driven forms you do not access the model classes and in reactive forms you cannot operate the model in the template now property binding shortened syntax because the value you assign to the name directive is a string literal you can use the shortened syntax and omit the c square bracket around the attribute name note that a square bracket around the attribute name and single quotes around the attribute value let's continue the example of the data range model introduced when we explained the from group name directives the component and from model remain the same you only need to complete the template as in the from group name directive you just specify the name of a from control you want to link to the dom element again these are the names you choose while defining the from model from control can be used for single field forms when you do not want to create a from model with from group but still want to use forms api features like validation and the reactive behavior provided by the from control dot value chains property now refactoring the sample from now let's refactoring the sample registration from for listening 7.1 originally it was a plain html from and then you applied a template driven approach now it's time for a new 
reactive version. You start a reactive form by defining a form model. The form model property gives an instance of the form group type that defines the structure of the form. You will use this property in the template to bind the model to the DOM element with the form group directives. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome to the course. In this lecture, I am telling you about a brief overview of the HTTP objects API. Web applications run HTTP request asynchronously so the UI remain responsive and the user can continue working with the application while the HTTP requests are being processed by the server. Asynchronous HTTP request can be implemented using callbacks, promises or observable. All the promises eliminate the callback hell they have the shortcoming that is there is no way to cancel a pending request made with a promise. When a promise resolves or rejects, the client receives either the data or an error message, but in either case, it will just be a single piece of data. A promise does not offer a way to handle a continuous stream of chunks of data delivered over time. Observable do not have this shortcoming. We looked at a promise-based scenario that resulted in multiple necessary requests to get a price quota for a stock, generating unnecessary network traffic. Then in the example with the weather service, we de demonstrated how you can cancel HTTP request made with observable. Let's look at the Angular implementation of the HTTP class which is included in the at Angular or HTTP package. This package includes several classes and interface as described in the Angular HTTP client documentation. Now what's the fetch API? There is an effort under way to unify the process of fetching resource on the web. The fetch API can be used as a replacement for the XML HTTP request object. It defines generic request and response object which can be used not only with HTTP but also with other emerging web technologies like service workers and the Catch API. To extract the body's content from the response, you need to use one of the methods in the response object. Each method expects the body to be in a certain format. You read the body as plain text using the text method, which it turn returns a promise. Unlike Angular's observable-based HTTP service, the Fetch API is promise-based. The Fetch API is mentioned in Angular documentation because several on Angular class and interfaces are inspired by its now. Creating a web server with Node and TypeScript. Many platform allows you to develop and deploy web server. We decide to use Node.js for the reasons. That is, there is no need to learn a new programming language to understand the code. A node allows you to create a standalone application. Node does a great job in the area of communication using HTTP or web stocks. Using load lets you continue writing code in TypeScript so we do not have to explain how to create a web server in Java, .NET or Python. 
In note, a simple web server can be written with a few lines of code and you will start with a very basic one. Then you will write a web server that can serve JSON data using the HTTP protocol. A bit later you will create yet another version of the server that will communicate with the client over a web stock connection. Now creating a simple web server. You will create a standalone node application that will run as a server supporting all the angular code examples. When both the server and client sliders are readily, the projector's directory will have the structure. If you have run the code sample from appendix, you already have the TypeScript compiler installed on your computer. Let's start by creating a directory named HTTP underscore webstocket underscore samples with a server subdirectory. After running the NMP, run TSC command. The turns file hello underscore server dot js file will be saved in the build directory and you can start your web server. Now type is skip 2.0 and add types. In this project, you use a locally installed TSC compiler version 2.0 which uses the add types package to install type definition files. That's because older version of TSC did not support the types compiler option and if you have an older version of TSC installed globally, running TSC will use the version causing complication errors. To ensure that you use the local version of TSC, configure it as a command in the scripts section of package.json and start the compiler by entering the nmp run tsc command to transpile the server's file. Run this command from the same directory where the tsconfig.json file is located. Now serving JSON. In all the auction code samples so far, the data about products and review has been hard coded in the product services.ts file as arrays of JSON formatted object. In the hands on section, you will move this data to the server. So the node web server needs to know how to serve json to send json to the browser you need to modify the header to specify a meme type of application or json the snippet suffices as an illustration of sending json but real world serves perform more function such as reading file routing and handling various HTTP requests. Later in the auction example, you will need to respond with either product or review data depending on the request. To minimize manual coding, let's install expression, a node framework that provides a set of features required by all web application. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to the course. In this lecture, first I am telling you about live type script, recomplication and code reload. The server side examples are written in type script. So you need to use TSC to transpile the code to JavaScript period to deploying 
it in not to set the auto complication mode for your code open a separate command window in the directory with the sources and run the command when no file names are specified tsc uses the tsconfig.json file for compilation option now wherever you make a change in the typescript code and save the file it will generate a corresponding .js file in the build directory and specified in tsconfig.json live compilation of the typescript code helps but the node server or not automatically pick up code changes after it has started so that you do not need to manually restart the node server to see your code changes in action you can use a handy utility nodemon it will monitor for any changes in your source and when it detects changes will automatically restart your server and reload the code now adding the restful api for serving products your ultimate goal is to serve products and reviews for the auction application in this section we will illustrated how to prepare a node server with rest endpoints to serve products in json format when http get required are received you will modify the code in the my express server.ts file to serve either all products or a specific one the modified version of this application shown next is located in the auction rest server.ts file now you can start the auction rest server the ts application in node and see if the browser received all product or a selected product now bringing angular and node together earlier you created the http underscore web socket underscore samples folder containing the auction rest server dot ts file which is a node application that responds to http get request and supplies product details in this section you will write an angular client that will issue http request and treat the products data as an observable object returned by your server the code of the angular application will be located in the client sub directory now a static resource on the server a typical web application deployed on the server includes a static resource that have to be loaded in the browsers when the users enters the application's url because we are using system js which does on the fly transpiling the type skip files are a static resource as well from nodes perspective the angular portion of this application is considered a static resource because angular apps load dependencies from node underscore module this directory also belongs to the static resource required by the browser the express framework has a special api to specify the directories with a static resource and you will make slight modification in the auction rest server.ts file in the file you did not specify directory 
with static resource because no client's app was deployed there. Let's give the same rest in points on the server that is slash server main dot html which is the landing page of the application products gets all products products dot id gets a product by its id unlike in the my underscore express underscore servers dot ts application you do not want node to handle the base url you want node to send the main dot html file to the browser now npm scripts npm supports the scripts property in package.json with more than a dozen scripts available right out of the box you can also add new commands specific to your development and development workflow some of these scripts needs to be done manually and some are invoked automatically in general if any command in the script section starts with the post prefix it will run automatically after the command is specified after this prefix for example if you define the command post install my custom install.js each time you run npm install the my custom install.js script will run as well similarly if a command has a pre prefix the command will run before the command named after this prefix now common versus separate configuration files all code samples for the client and server belongs to a single npm project and share the same package.json file all dependencies and typing are shared by the client and server applications this setup may reduce the time for installing dependencies and save a space on disk because some of the dependencies may be shared between the client and server but keeping the code for the client and server in a single project tends to complicate the build automation process for two reasons. Number one, client and server may require conflicting versions of a particular dependency. Number two, you use client automation tools which may require a different configuration from client and server and their node underscore module directories would not be located in the root directory of the project. And that's it the common versus separate configuration file. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to the course. In this lecture, first I am telling you about getting to know Jasmine. Jasmine allows you to implement a behavior driven development process, which suggests that test of any unit of software should be specified in terms of the desired behavior of the unit. With VDD, you use neutral language constructs to describe that you think your code should be doing. You write unit test specifications in the form of short sentence such as application component is successfully instantiated or a stars component emits the rating change event. Because it is so easy to understand the meaning of the test. They can serve as your program documentation. If other developers need to become familiar with your code, they can start by reading the code of the unit test to understand your 
intentions using natural language to describe taste has another advantage it is easy to reason about the taste results as much as we had like all of our taste to pass make a habit of ensuring that your taste fails first and see if the taste result are easy to understand in jasmine terminology a taste is called a speck and a combination of one or more speck is called a sweet a taste sweet is defined with the describe function this is where you describe what you are testing each test speck in the sweet is programmed as an eat function which defines the expected behavior of the code under test and how to test it now how to store test files the jasmine framework is used to unit test javascript applications written in different frameworks or in pure javascript one of the approaches for storing test files is to create a separate test directory and keep only test scripts there so they are not mixed up with the application code in angular applications we prefer to keep each test script in the same directory as the component or service under test this is convenient for two reason number 1 all component related files are located together in the same directory typically we create a directory for storing the components .ts .html and .css files adding a .spec file there would not clutter the directory content number 2 there is no need to change the configuration of the system js loader which already knows where the application file are located it will load the test for the same location now how to test now that you have an understanding of how to test the question is how to test in angular application written in typescript you can test function classes and component test function say you have a function that convert the past string to upper case you can write multiple test just for this function for cases where the argument is null an empty string undefined a lower case word an upper case word a mixed case word a number and so on test classes if you have a class containing several methods you can write a test suite that includes all the test needed to ensure that each of the class methods functions properly test components you can test the public api of your service or components in addition to testing then for correctness we will show your code samples that use publicly exposed properties or methods now how to install jasmine you can get jasmine by downloading its stand alone distribution but you will install it using npm as you have done for all other packages the npm repository has several jasmine related packages but you just need jasmine code dot open the command window in the root of your project to make sure the typescript compiler knows about the jasmine type run the command to install the jasmine type define file 
when you test are written you need a test runner application to run them jasmine comes with two runners one is for the command line and the other is html based now using the stand alon jasmine distribution if you want to see the running jasmine test quickly download the zip file with the stand alone version of jasmine from http github.com/jasmine/jasmine/release unzip this file and open spec-runner.html in your web browser you will also need to add all required angular dependencies as you did in every index.html file in all the code samples in the lecture plus the angular testing library you will keep using the system js loader but this time you will load the code of the unit test which will load the application code via import statements in this lecture we will show you how to write unit test you will run them manually using the html based runner first then we will show you how to use karma which can run command line test the report possible errors in different browsers now hot comes with angular's testing library Angular comes with a testing library that includes the wrappers for Jasmine's describe it and exit function and also at such functions as before it assign fake assign and other because you do not configure the bootstrap the application during test runs Angular offers a test bed helper class that allows you to declare modules component providers and so on test bed includes such function as configure test tick module create component inject and other and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course In this lecture first I am telling you about testing service Typically angular services are injected into component We set up the injectors you need to define providers for an it block Angular offers the before each setup method which runs before each it call you call inject the service into it using inject to test synchronous function in the service real service may need some time to complete and this may slow your test there are two way to speed up test number 1 create a class that implements a mock service by extending a class of the real service that return hard coded data quickly for example you can create a mock service for hyder service that return immediately without making any request to the remote server that returns actual hyder data using the fake assign function which automatically identifies asynchronous calls and replaces timeouts callbacks and promises with immediately executed functions the tick function allows you to fast forward the time So there is no need to wait until the timeout expires. Now testing navigation with the router. To test the router, 
your spec scripts can invoke such router methods as navigate and navigate by url the navigate method takes an array of configured routes that will con construct the route as an argument whereas navigate by url takes a string representing the segment of the url you want to navigate to if you use navigate you specify the configured path and route params if any if the router is properly configured it should update the url in the address bar of the browser the next code snippet show how to programmatically navigate to the product route pass zero as a route param and ensure that after the navigation the url has a segment of product when you provide an array of values to the router it is called a common api now testing components components are classes with templates if your class contain methods implementing the application's logic you can test them as you would any other functions but more often you will testing the templates in particular you are interested in testing the binding work properly and that they display the expected data angular offers the test bed dot create component method which returns a component fixer object that will be used to work with the component when it is created this fixer gives you access to both the component and the native html elements instances so you can assign values to the component's properties as well as find specific html elements in the component's template you can also trigger the change detection cycle on the components by invoking the detect change method on the fixture after the change detection has updated the ui you can run the expect function to check the rendered values now testing a sample weather application let's try testing angular components and services using an application that has a main page with two links home and weather you will use a router to navigate to the weather page which is a refactored version of the weather app you created a large chunk of the code was placed in the constructor of app component which complicates testing because you cannot invoke the code of the constructor after an object is created now weather component will get the weather service injected and weather service will use the remote server to get the weather information now configuring system js to use an html based test runner you need to add angular testing modules to your system js configuration the fragment from the system js dot config dot js file that comes with the project now testing the weather router the router for this application is configured in the app dot routing dot ts file although you can configure the route either in your app module or in a separate file having the routes configured in a separate file is a best practice doing so allows you to reuse the route configuration to run both the application and the test script the script in app.module.ts of the weather apps use the routes constant in the declaration of at ng modules
now testing the weather service the weather service class encapsulate communication with the weather service note that use of the upper token type mention you use it twice to inject into url base and url suffix the value provided in the ng model director Using dependency injection for URL base and URL suffix makes it simpler to replace the real weather server with a mock if need be. The get weather method in listing 9.6 forms the URL of the HTTP get by concatenating URL base, city, and URL suffix. The result is processed by map, filter and another map so the observable will emit object of type higher result. You are not testing the underscore hash result and underscore first data method because private method can be unit tested. Should you decide to test them, change their access level to public. To test weather service, you will use the mock backed class, which is one of Angular implementation of the HTTP object. And that's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to the course. In this lecture, first I am telling you about template driven versus reactive approaches. In a template driven approach, forms are fully programmed in the components template. The template defines the structure of the form, the format of its fields, and the validation rules. In contrast, in a reactive approach, you create the form model programmatically in the code. The template can be either statically defined and bound to an exciting from model or dynamically generated based on the model. By the end of this, you will be familiar with the Angular Forms API and the various ways of working with forms and applying data validation. Now overview of HTML forms. HTML provides basic features for displaying forms validating entered values and submitting the data to the server. But HTML forms may not be good enough for real-world business application which need to a way to programmatically process the entered data. Apply custom validation rule, display user-friendly error message, Transform the format of the entered data and choose the way data is submitted to the server. For business application, one of the most important considerations when choosing a web framework is how well it handles forms. We will evaluate a standard HTML from feature using a sample user registration form and we will define a set of requirement that a modern web application needs to fulfill user's expectation. We will also look at the form feature provided by Angular. Now a standard browser features. You may be wondering what you need from an application framework other than data binding. If HTML already allows you to valid and submit forms, to answer the question, let's review an HTML form that uses only standard browser's feature. The form contains a button and four input fields, username, SSN, password, and password configuration. Users can enter 
वॉट एवर वैल्यूज दे वांट नो इनपुट वैलिडेशन इज एप्लाइड हेयर वेन द यूजर क्लिक्स द सबमिट बटन द फॉर्म्स वैल्यूज आर सबमिटेड टू द सर्वर्स रेजिस्टर इन पॉइंट यूजिंग एच टी टी पी पोस्ट एंड द पेज इज रिफ्रेशड द डिफल्ट एच टी एम एल फ्रॉम बिहेवियर इज नॉट ए गुड फिट फॉर ए एस पी ए हुई टाइपिकली नीड्स द फांगशनलिटी दैट इज वैल्यूशन रूल्स शुड बी एप्लाइड टू इंडिविजुअल इनपुट फील्ड्स इरोर मैसेज शुड बी डिसप्लेड नेक्स्ट टू द इनपुट फील्ड दैट कॉज द प्रॉब्लेम डिपेंडेंट फील्ड शुड बी वैलिडेट ऑल टूगेदार दिस फॉर्म्स हैज फास्ट एंड फास्ट कन्फर्मेशन फील्ड सो हॉट एवर आइदर ऑफ देम इज चेंज बोथ फील्ड शुड बी रिवैलिडेटेड The application should be in control of the value submitted to the server when the user clicks the submit button. The application should invoke an event handler function to pass the from value. The application can validate the values or change their format before sending the submit request. The application should decide how the data is submitted to the server, whether it is a regular HTTP request, an AJAX request, or a web socket message. Several standard validation attributes allow you to validate individual input field, required pattern, max length, mean, max, step, and so on. For example you can request the username be a required field and it is value should contain only letters and numbers here you use a regular expression to restrict what can be entered in the field when the user click the submit button the form will be validated before the submit request is sent now angular forms api There are two approaches to working with forms in Angular: template driven and reactive. These two approaches are exposed as two different APIs in Angular. With the template driven approach, the form model is defined in the components template using directives because you are limited to the html syntax while defining the from model the template driven approach suits only simple scenario for complex from the reactive approach is a better option with the reactive approach you create an underlying data structure in the code now enabling forms api support both type of forms template driven and reactive need to be explicitly enabled before you start using them to enable template driven forms at forms module from at angular or forms to the imports list of the ng module that uses the forms api for reactive forms use the reactive form module here to how to do it we will not repeat this code for each example but all of this assume the models are imported all the downloadable code samples for the book import the modules in app module now template driven forms As we mentioned earlier you can use only directives to define a model in the template driven approaches but what directives can you use these directives comes with from module ng module ng module group and ng forms we discuss how the ng model 
directive can be used for two way data binding but in the forms api it plays a different role it marks the html element that should become a part of the from model although these two roles are separate they do not conflict and can be safely used at the same time on the single html element you will see example in this section let's briefly look at these directives and then apply the template driven approach to the sample registration form and that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome back to the course in this lecture first i am telling you about directives overview here we will briefly describe the three main directives from from module ng model ng model group and ng from we will show how they can be used in the template and highlight their most important features ng from is the directive that represent the entire from it is automatically attached to every from element ng from implicitly creates an instance of the from group class that represent the model and stores the from's data ng from automatically discovers all child html elements marked with the ng model directives and adds these values to the from model the ng from directive has multiple selectors that you can use to attach ng from to non element this syntax comes in handy if you are using a css framework that requires a certain structure for the html elements and you cannot use the from element first you specify ng forms as the value of the export as property of ng from a point at the instance of ng from attached to the from then you can use the a variable to access instance members of the ng from object one of them is value which represent the current value of all from's fields as a javascript object you can pass it through the standard json pipe to display the from's value on the page the code subscribe to the ng submit event using the event binding syntax on submit is an arbitrary name for the method defined in the component and it is invoked when the ng submit event is fired to pass all of the from's values as an argument to this method use the a variable to access ng from's values properly now in reaching the html from let's refactor the sample user registration from from listing 7.1 there it was a plain html from that did not use any angular features now you will warp it into an angular component add validation logic and enable programmatic handling of the submit event let's start by refactoring the template and then move on to the type script part you declare a logical template variable f that points at the ng from subject attached to the from element you need this variable to access the from's properties such as value and valid and to check whether the from has error of a specific type now reactive forms unlike in the template driven approach creating a reactive forms is a 
टू स्टेप प्रोसेस फर्स्ट यू नीड टू क्रिएट ए मॉडल प्रोग्रामेटिकली इन द कोड एंड देन यू लिंक एच टी एम एल एलिमेंट्स टू दैट मॉडल यूजिंग डायरेक्टिव इन द टेम्पलेट लेस स्टार्ट उद द फार्ष्ट स्टेप क्रिएटिंग ए मडल नाउ फ्रम मडल द फ्रम मडल इज एन आंडारलाइंग डाटा स्ट्रक्चर दैट किस द फ्रम डाटा इट्स कन्स्ट्रक्ट आउट अफ स्पेशल क्लसेस डिफाइन इन द एट एंगुलर और फ्रम मड्यूल फ्रम कंट्रोल फ्रम ग्रुप एंड फ्रम एरे From control is the atomic from unit. Usually, it corresponds to a single input element, but it can also represent a more complex UI component, like a calendar or a slider. From control gives the current value of the HTML element. It corresponds to the element's validity status and Either it is been modified. From group usually represents a part of the from and is a collection of from controls. From group aggregates the values and the status of each from control in the group. If one of the controls in a group is invalid, the entire group become invalid. It's convenient from managing related field on the form. From group is also used to represent the entire form. For example, if a data range is represented by two date input fields, they can be combined into a single group to obtain the data range as a single value and display an error if either of the inter dates is invalid. now from directives the reactive approach uses a completely different set of directives than template driven forms the directives for reactive forms comes with reactive forms module all the reactive directives are prefixed with the form integer string so you can easily distinguish the richards reactive from the template driven approach just by looking at the template reactive directives are not exportable which means you cannot create a variable in the template that reference an instance of a directive this is done intentionally to clearly separate the two approaches in template driven forms you do not access the model classes and in reactive forms you cannot operate the model in the template the first column list the model classes covered in the section in the second column are the directives that bind a dom elements to an instance of a model class using the property binding syntax as you can see from array cannot be used with the property binding the third column list directives that link a dom element to a model class by name now property binding shorthand syntax because the value you assign to the name directive is a string literal you can use a shortened syntax and omit the square bracket around the attribute name note that a square bracket around the attribute name and single quotes around the attribute value from control name must be used in the scope of the from group directives it links one of its child from control instance to a dom element and that's it the property binding shorthand syntax that's it for the lecture thank you for watching
Hello everyone, welcome to the course. In this lecture, first time telling of how refactoring the sample from Now let's refactor the sample registration from from listing 7.1. Originally it was a plain HTML from and then you applied a template driven approach. Now it is time for a reactive version. You start reactive forms by defining a model from. The from model property keeps an instance of the from group type that defines the structure of the from. You will use this property in the template to bind the model to the DOM element with the from group directives. It is initialized programmatically in the constructor by instantiating model classes. The names you give to from controls in the parent from group are used in the template to link the model to the DOM elements with the from control name and from group name directives. Password group is a nested from group to group the password and password confirmation fields. It will be convenient to manage their values as a single object when you add from validation. Because reactive from directives are not exportable, you cannot access them in the template and pass the from's value directly to the on submit method as an argument instead you access the value using the components property that holds the forms model now using from builder from builder simplifies the creation of reactive forms it does not provide any unique feature component to the direct use of the from control from group and from array classes but its API is more terse and saves you from the repetitive typing of class names. Let's refactor the component class from the section to use from builder. The template will remain exactly the same. But you will change the way the from model is construct. Unlike from group, from builder allows you to instantiate from control is using an array. Each item of the array has a special meaning. The first item is from control's initial value. The second is a validation function. It can also accept a third argument which is an assigned validation function. The rest of the array item are ignored. Now from validation. One of the advantages of using the forms API compared to regular data binding is that forms have validation capabilities. Validation is available for both types of forms, template driven and reactive. You create validators as plain type script function. In the reactive approach, you use function directly. And in the template driven approach, you work them into custom directives. Let's start by validating reactive forms and then move to template driven ones. We will cover the basic and apply validation to the sample registration form. Now, validating reactive forms. Validators are just functions that conform to the 
इंटरफेस द वैलिडेटर फांगशन शुड डिक्लेयर ए सींगल पैरामिटार अफ टाइप एबसट्रैक्ट कंट्रोल एंड रिटार्न एंड अबजेक्ट लिटरल देर आर नो रेस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन अब द फांगशन इट इज आप टू दैलिडेटर्स अथर एबसट्रैक्ट कंट्रोल इज द सुपार क्लस फर फ्रम कंट्रोल फ्रम ग्रुप एंड फ्रम एरे उथ मीस ए भैलिडेटर्स कैन वि क्रिएटेड फर अल मडल क्लसेस A number of predefined validator ship with angular required mini length max length and pattern they are defined as static method of the validator's class declared in the at angular or forms module and they match standard html5 validation attributes now the error object The error returned by a validator is represented by a JavaScript object that has a property with the same name as the validator. Whether it is an object literal or an object with a complex prototype pull chain does not matter for the validator. The properties value can be of any type. and may provide additional error details the object has a top level property that matches the validator's name mini length it values is also an object with two field required length and actual length this error details can be used to display a user friendly error message not all validators provide the error details Sometimes the top level property just indicates that the error has occurred. In this case the property is initialized with the value true. Here is an example of the standard validators dot require errors object. Now configure validators with from builder. validators can also be configured when you are using from builder to define from models here is modified version of the model for the simple registration from that uses from builder the forms api supports asynchronous validators assign validators can be used to check from values against a remote server which involves sending an http request like regular validators assign validators are function the only difference is that assign validator should return either an observable or a promises object the complete running application that illustrates how to use assign validators is located in the 08_assignvalidators.ts file in the code that comes you are already familiar with the control properties such as valid invalid and errors for checking field status that's it for the lecture thank you for watching